Hi, this is uh, Aaron McGuffin, a pediatrician at the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine. We were looking for some creative ways to get the students energized about preparation for boards and uh, the concept of creating a Jeopardy-like event uh, came to fruition. So we looked into getting ourselves some equipment, uh, which Belinda Evans was wonderful in helping to uh, support and us getting that. And then I met with the class leadership in the second years, and they were like, hey, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, we haven't been doing a lot of activities as groups that we think would be super cool. So uh, that's when everything started. So the students kind of took the lead from there and sent out inquiries to their class. And by December of uh, this past year, uh, we had uh, 20 teams of five, which was half of the class, had formed up uh, their quiz bowl team. So the students were given full liberty to come up with their own five members. And uh, we have a, an official rule book uh, that we did not really have to get into. Thankfully this year we didn't have too many permutations, um, but uh, we had some rules in case somebody dropped out or so forth to be able to replace team members and stuff. But but yeah, they, they uh, created, I'm pretty sure they created their own Google Sheet and they started filling in their teams with their team names on there and off they went and uh, we gave them a deadline by which their team name and their full team needed to be created. And, uh, and then I was able to work with Christina to come up with a, a double elimination bracket and so we ended up having our own version of March Madness uh, which actually started in January but did end right there at the end of March. Part of the part of the fun was um, that they came up with their own creative team names. Uh, they were uh, within reason allowed to choose something that would be humorous but not offensive or something that was considered unprofessional so uh, we did end up with uh, some very creative names uh, like Lord Have Mercy. It was uh, something that I think they had a great time sort of getting behind. Anytime you delve into people's creative energies, I think that gives them a lot of uh, excitement. It gives them a lot of ownership of fun. So we had to do a little bit of research to see what the existing quiz bowl formats are out there, there's high school versions, there's college versions and so forth. So uh, we really had to do some math to figure out what would actually work within our time frame in order to get all the matches in. So after doing some of that research and uh, figuring out this, the students wanted to do a double elimination tournament, uh, that sort of put us well into uh, approximately 40 matches. And then doing the, the, the math, we ended up with figuring out that we could um, basically do a 41-question uh, match, uh, which was two rounds of 20 questions. Uh, the first round questions were worth 10 points. The second round questions were worth 20. And then we had a one final question that was worth 50 points. That was actually one that they would write down an answer to and submit. And each match uh, then took about 35, 40 minutes to complete. And so when we do each of the sessions, they would run a little over two hours uh, to get four matches in. So we had a great system um, from a website called buzzersystems.com. Nigel Derwin um, is the owner of that, and he was so helpful with us in helping to get a system that would work for what we were trying to achieve. And uh, we were able to get uh, the system with five handheld buzzer for each team. And uh, the system worked absolutely perfectly for us the entire time. Very easy to use, very easy to set up. It was uh, certainly added a whole new element uh, to our ability to, to pull this off and accurately be able to tell who buzzed in first. Because if we were gonna do a hand raising or slap on the table system, it would not have gone very well. The entire focus was to ask them questions that will be on their level one complex board exam. And so we used uh, resources uh, that um, come from 
the NBOME outline, uh, those topics for sure, uh, as well as some of the uh, review books that we feel are high quality and that is where we found over 1,600 unique board questions um, that we used for our uh, testing of the students during the, during the games. We had some faculty uh, help write some of the questions, which was super helpful. And we had several faculty drop in just to watch some of the matches, uh, just to sort of see what it was, was going on with. Um, and then the Aspire department uh, were my scorekeepers, and so they helped. Uh, make sure to keep track of all the scores and of course I had help here on the floor with uh, Christina Frazier uh, who helped me get all of my uh, draws up to date and posting and everything like that to make sure all the emails went out accurately and scheduling the rooms and so forth so like every project there was a huge team of people that were super helpful behind the scenes uh, to make things run smoothly for us. As, as the competition got further in and, and teams began to get into what we called elimination rounds, where it was either win or go home, uh, you could see that the intensity uh, and the meaningfulness of each question certainly increased, uh, which of course uh, put me in the, on the spotlight too, because I, I really had to make sure that the questions were solid and that I really thought through all the other possible answers uh, beforehand, uh, which is sometimes not easily done. So it, it kept me on my toes as well to make sure that, that if there were controversies that we'd be able to, to handle them appropriately. So, but the students did do their fair share of, of professional trash talking, uh, again, which sort of added to the fun ambiance of the entire event. Not unlike the president's softball game and several of the other events that happen on campus where we get everybody's uh, competitive juices flowing. Uh, we put together a faculty team uh, at the end of the tournament uh, for that last night that was handpicked that uh, we thought would bring uh, some fierce competition to those students and even our faculty team got taken out by these students uh, mostly I think uh, because uh, those uh, students are quicker on their buzzers than our faculty. You, you get a lot of anecdotal feedback where a student will come up to you and say something like, man, like after that quiz bowl the other night, like that next day I was doing practice questions and that topic came up in one of my practice questions. And I was like, wait, I know that from quiz bowl. And so I heard a lot of students say things like that. I think there's a huge, huge intangible benefit to just the general enthusiasm and cheerleading that sort of goes behind it and where you get people involved and get people competitive, I have no doubt that it really pushed students to study more for their boards, uh, to do more practice questions uh, as they prepared each week uh, for Quiz Bowl. Uh, there was some teams that were absolutely just phenomenal. Uh, you could tell that they had really put in a lot of work um, uh, previously and were really easily able to answer a lot of uh, challenging questions. I've already had the current first year students come up and tell me that they've already started forming their teams and they've already started creating their names. So they're super excited about it. Uh, there's uh, even the thought that we may go ahead and do a first uh, year version and a second year version uh, next year as well. And so I think this format certainly uh, would be a great way for them to relax a little bit and have some fun review the week before a test or so uh, and give them a chance to be competitive, have fun, laugh a little bit, but also make sure they're ready for their upcoming exams.